Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Tris and today welcome to this new segment I called TV Show Thursdays. Anyways, so um the reason why I created this segment is because you know as much as I really love watching films and movies, I also love watching TV shows and especially the complex ones like what I'm going to discuss today and personally this is this show is the reason why I created this segment honestly because this show is like really just complex and I think you know if I had any thoughts I had any analysis I should share with you all so welcome guys and today we're going to discuss we're going to discuss, we're going to crack open, we're going to delve down the cellar, down the rabbit hole of this show called Alias Grace. Yeah! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! No, I mean like this is not just like fangirling moments. This show is honestly one of the most complex shows I've ever watched. I actually watched it the second time after I finished it, like when I finished it, I watched it again. I like replayed like these certain scenes, these certain elements that we will discuss later on because damn sure this, this show, this show's the bomb, legit. The this, this show is the bomb and knowing that this show is adapted from Margaret Atwood's uh, novel with the same name, Alias Grace, it's a very, you know, for me, it's quite a surprise because not all film adaptations of books, film adaptations or TV show adaptations of books usually follow this kind of flow. But the show is really quite different because it, well, personally, I haven't read the book. But based on the interviews that I saw, based on the reviews that I watched also, it actually matches the level of the book and I think that's just mind-blowing it makes me want to read the actual book itself so I'm just gonna the show is uh, well the show is well directed well written well performed oh my god well performed and it's just gonna blow your minds that's why we're going to crack this case open and we're going to analyze the, the TV show itself. Let's delve into the analysis. <laughs> so this show discussed so much about Grace, basically. Grace really, even the beginning of her story, when she, before even before she came in Canada, it's very tragic because her mom died. And I don't know, throughout her life, it's just really tragic. She experienced harassment, she experienced death, of her loved ones of her close ones and she's dealt with so 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 much hence she has different personalities but how did these came to be I mean like does one have to experience a ton of traumatic experiences in order to have mental illness like split personality or multiple personalities yes it can be possible because it has accumulated in that level he, she is the holder of these three personalities that we will discuss later on and you know she doesn't know who she is who she really is like yes she has these collection of memories all together different versions of the event example the murder but she doesn't really know who she is and I, I think that makes me question that's my first question in the show like who is Grace Marks with all of these personalities combined, where is the true Grace Marks there? You know? And I don't, honestly, I don't have the answer to that. So we're just gonna leave that in questions. The three personalities, and uh, oh my gosh, I love, 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 love to discuss this so much because this is the heart of the story. This is what causes Grace to have all those hallucinations, to lose herself more repressing her true self because of these three personalities so of course we have the first personality is my favorite <laughs> my all-time favorite mary mary whitney mary is not just a personality but she's a real person okay 
before I go on with the personalities, these personalities, okay, if you um, haven't watched the show, these personalities are actually persons that Grace has interacted with or had a relationship with. They're real people in the show. So the first one, of course, is Mary Whitney. She's like, yes, she is my favorite personality of all because I don't know. Yes, she's very optimistic. She's very caring of Grace, but there is a hidden viciousness in her that we didn't really see when she was alive. But when she was dead, that's when it just manifested itself in the form of Grace. So like, however, I already, obviously, I've already sensed it. I've already sensed the viciousness already when she, even she was alive because like she said in one of the episodes that she stated her background like everyone should be afraid of me i should be feared i can kill these people because it's in her blood basically so it's really just it's, it's so mysterious that you have to hide this darkness inside of you because you know you never really completely know a person until you know them and I think Grace has an already an inclination regarding Mary Whitney but hasn't really you know hasn't really confirmed it but when she was doing it to herself acting upon that personality it's just it really shows who Mary Whitney is but I'm not saying Mary Whitney is this really vicious character Mary Whitney Mary Whitney's feelings, anger, viciousness is the accumulation of what she felt when she died. I mean, when she died, she said she was angry. And she, she just can't really let it out because she's in pain, but she is angry as heck. And then when she died, it's, it's just anger. She just feels anger. And you know what ang anger does? It, destroy, it honestly destroys a person. When you act upon it, it's intoxicating, but at the same time, it's definitely not right. When the second personality that we have, of course, is Nancy, and, and I don't know, guys, but she is my least favorite, my least favorite personality and person of all because obviously, she's a bitch. Like, honestly, like when she first came on screen, like ooh another Mary because she looks so friendly and also sweet like that but when Grace gets to know her she's like bitch watch that wash that bitch go clean that up she's a maid for heaven's sake and I mean like she has this authority I get her and she doesn't like sharing things but with that personality in mind it clashes with another personality of grace which is mary as we all said and we all know that mary doesn't like being pushed over doesn't like being oppressed so they clash and i think you know that clashing between two personalities has manifested itself in grace during her time in the asylum as we all see in the show her time in the asylum she seems so stressed she seems so trapped as if she can't control herself and it's because mary and nancy are having a fit that's what happens if you don't share so nancy you share things now good for you because it mary whitney and nancy have these vivid similarities with each other because you see when mary died Grace saw Nancy as someone she can be friend with, as l just like Mary Whitney. But, and wait, as well as the hair, the looks, it reminds Grace of Mary so much. Sometimes, you know, we see someone, and we remind, they remind us of someone else, but their personalities are really different. In the show, it is clearly expressed that there are only two personalities. But for me, I don't know. I believe it is not just two personalities involved in this, but three. And the last one in this personality is the mom. Grace's mom. 
I think, you know, the trait that Grace inherited from the mom, mom personality was the fact that she wanted to please her dad. Because um, when she was 15, when she was still living with her dad, she stated that she ignored all of those abuses and everything because she just wanted to please the dad. And I think... And I think that is one of the traits of the mom. Because, you know, if you're being abused, why stay? Why have a ton of kids if you're being pushed over like that? So I believe all of these personalities, um, there's no denying that they're very indulgent of their men, of um, their counterparts, of their loved ones. Oh, God men destroy everything even a woman the the reason why there is three for me is because you know the constant mention of number three the the three crows the three blankets and the three rocks you know i, I think you know their justification is the show's justification is mary grace and whitney that's why it's three but i think you know grace doesn't really include this because we don't really know who she is and the fact that they were all trapped when they died i think that really confirms it like and their spirits instead of going out they went to grace so it's there's this scene in the show where um grace had a dream and all of the lovers of the personalities appeared before her and grace indulged with all of them but in a very well choreographed sequence and it's just it really describes uh the different relationships of the personalities regarding the lovers no uh nancy with mr kinnear and mcdermott before i forget i think nancy had this relationship with mcdermott because it why would she be angry all the time if they weren't having any of those spicy moments together right I mean like that's for me that's for me I think that she Nancy had this really sexual relationship with it comes in term but without commitment and she just she just you know forgets all of it by the morning and of course you know it accumulated to McDermott's anger because you know uh, bitch why are you like, yelling at me we just slept together we just kissed together like right so moving on the well choreographed sequence regarding grace interacting with the different personalities some counterparts lovers was well choreographed because it really described the relationship of the personalities with the lovers and it's just so weird because you know it's in the personification of grace and you know, Sarah Gadon, it's just the choreography, the choreography, guys. I don't know. I mean, like, if you watch the show, you'll definitely love it. You'll definitely, you'll definitely scream for it because it's just the choreography is so smooth. The sequence, it really, really explains already what the movie is about and who Grace really is a holder of these personalities. Okay, so since we've mentioned the personalities, women, and the lovers, which are men, let us boil down further in what the TV show talks about. So it really clearly talks about feminism versus toxic masculinity. During that time, we all know that women don't have a place in this world, and men are the only ones who have a stand men always have all of these um they dictate what society should do what society how should how society should act specifically how a woman should dress should act should behave should think everything it's dictated by society the patriarchy the men like they made all of these things as if they know what a woman really thinks 
when a woman, let's say for example, murders someone in cold blood, a woman misbehaves. It's automatically an X for them because, oh no, oh my gosh, it's very vicious, it's very vile. In fact, men have been doing all of these things and it's just, what? Right? Like the, because you know, women before are perceived as you should be pure, you should not have sins. And, but when a man does it, it's okay. His sins can be repented and sort of like that. Explain it to me, world. Explain it to me. Part, men? With that in mind, the women in this show, Grace, for example, uh, with the help of her different personalities, she fought back against this toxic masculinity, repression of society. The reason that she can't really express herself more is because of these men forcing her to be like this. The murder that has, you know, exemplified this point of fighting back. And it can be, it can be fem and feminism, but it also stands for fighting back for the oppression because you know it we all know that gr that mary was the one who initiated this murder not only did they fight back against this repression against this dictation of society but also it, there came a point that grace herself not her personalities or whatsoever realized something on her own is that men will always be like this men have this obsession of picturing a woman suffering that they will be the ones the men that they will be the ones to save them men when they do stuff to women they do like horrible stuff they expect themselves to be forgiven because these are women they're very forgiving but in that case, you know, it's before you easily forgive a man for doing those stuff to you before because if you don't, the man has the upper hand in uh, telling society, oh, this girl, he's gonna ruin your reputation. And I think that's what happened with uh, Grace to and Jamie Walsh. Like, Jamie Walsh was the one who caused Grace to be hanged he made her life a living hell but you know when jamie asked can you tell me again the asylum like what the fuck <laughs> like knowing that he already caused the suffering of grace and lets her reminisce again the trauma that she experienced all of the pain all of the harassment that she experienced it's unforgivable unacceptable but men are like that men has this obsession really of oh i'm gonna be the one to save you i'm gonna give you a new life but in fact a woman obviously can live by herself but she doesn't have a choice during that time the realization in this is grace knows grace knows the truth what you did to me was absolutely trash what you did to me was absolutely terrible i don't have the right to forgive you but i'm going to forgive you anyway i'm lying through my teeth because that's what i'm gonna do and i think you know that's just you know at the same time badass but at the same time it's really she's conforming to what but we you don't have to you can't do anything during that time because it's it's society uh, you know since we're already talking about obsession let us talk about dr jordan and grace dr jordan is this really cute doctor american doctor and um he is the one responsible in ex examining grace whether she is insane during the murders or not but you know in examining a person like grace that is really hard to crack and you know, you, you never know uh, what's true or not until the very end. You can see clearly 
what she who she really is she's gone in your head you're obsessed already you dream of her and and I think you know dr. Jordan and uh, you, and you know there's the there's a point in which Sarah Gadon and an interviewer from build I will link it down below if you want to watch the interview but it's a very insightful interview and it stated that dr. Jordan and grace are very similar because um they're both repressed individuals like grace is repressed in terms of she doesn't know herself she just knows what society labels her but she really doesn't know fully herself she is aware of these different collection of memories altogether but who she really is no idea and she is and I think you know she is repressed also in a way because she can't really express her personalities altogether and at the same time this is also applicable with dr. Jordan because dr. Jordan is repressed in a way that she he feel things for grace but he can't feel it because he's a doctor obviously his rank his position but also his gender you know um, during that time I think you know men when they have feelings for a woman they he pursues them he goes for it but he he just he repressed it repressed it so much in himself then by the end of the day when he knew the real thing about grace he can't accept it he takes it out he's angry he takes it out on someone and that scene that specific scene with mrs humphrey was just it was just really hard to watch but at the same time you see him taking everything that he repressed outside and he just wants to forget he wants to forget when he banged his head but what he did to mrs humphrey he sort of let it all go but in a really harsh manner the relationship between grace and dr jordan it's it's complex and it's really weird because um shrinks have a tendency to become attached to their clients if only we would know what grace truly felt I think she would have felt the same for for Dr. Jordan but I guess Dr. Jordan he's obsessed but he has this care also for Grace but let's talk about uh, really shortly about the technicalities in this film this show was well written because it really delved into the vulnerability of Grace and us as a spectator we're like dr jordan just watching grace unfold before us and it is super well directed everything is mysterious everything i mean everything really focused on grace herself but what i really wanted to commend in this show is the freaking performance of sarah Gadon. like like Sarah Gadon, I've seen her movie Royal Night Out once and it was really funny. She was really cute, but in this show she is just completely different. Her performance, her ability to transition from one personality to another, from grace to a vicious one, an evil one. It's just really terrific her skill to with the accent she's just so she's just so good <laughs> and um and also just the just the fact that she did not only live as mary i she did not only live as grace she lived with the personalities uh, with mary the mom the nancy all of it and she incorporated that in her acting when she was delivering my favorite favorite scene which was the hypnot hypnotization 
hypnotizing the hypnotizing scene and that scene was just <laughs> I don't know guys but you know when that scene came up it was just it was just an experience like Grace I was like yeah I was like really shocked because I was caught by surprise honestly and her acting all throughout the show really really the emotions the 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 repression of grace she embodied it so perfectly well and my I don't know my most favorite sequence of all was the opening sequence in the first episode itself you see her projecting all of these personalities that society has labeled her and it's just her looking in the mirror reflecting herself as if she doesn't know who she is and oh my goodness that's just a really really good performance by Sarah Godon but also the whole ensemble of the show you see if with this show this complex you really have to have a well-rounded cast and I think you know this show it really delivered superb superb performances superb direction superb script writing as in everything and also the production itself you see it's really dark you see it's it's really mysterious as in the production it's just it as if you're back in time which is amazing especially the penitentiary I love that uh, I love that uh, set that location anyways let me so long I think I think we're done for today regarding this show alias grace and you know if you have more analysis comment it down below and let us learn from each other you know if I haven't if I forgot to mention anything regarding the show let me know and because you were we're here to help each other out and we're here to fangirl and we're here to love shows movies like this complex and yeah so thank you guys so much for listening and see you in the next episode so bye guys thank you <laughs>